Beloved in the Lord, I bring you greetings from the people called Methodist in Ghana and abroad and invite you to share in our devotional on the third day of September on the theme, Love as God Loves. Love as God Loves. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come to you this morning in frailty and humility and ask that you speak to us as we reflect on love. Lord, may we understand what you have for us and may we practice what we hear so that at the end of it all, your blessings will be our portion. Lord, use me as a vessel of blessing to your people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I would like us to read from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 27 through to 31. Luke 6, 27 to 31. And I read, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Amen. The key verse, my brothers and sisters, is he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. My Christian friends, when we talk about God's love and love for humankind, a popular hymn by Horatius Bona, born 1808 to 1889, comes to mind. And he has this to say. Methodist team 444 and verse 4. Beloved, let us love. In love is light. And he who loveth not dwelleth in night. Generally, my friends, generally, People love those who love them in return. But God rewards those who love their enemies. And Horatius Bona is saying that people who are not lovers of their enemies live in darkness. In loving our enemies, one becomes more like Jesus Christ who actually gave his life for those who rejected and hated him. Therefore, let us do well to love our enemies, even as God loves us. In looking at the verses that we read, we experience that the Jews despised the Romans because they oppressed them. And because they oppressed God's people, people hated them. But Jesus is teaching on loving their enemies made most of the people who were following him withdrew and turn away from following Christ. But importantly, my Christian friends, Jesus wasn't talking about having affection for enemies. He was talking about an act of will. An act of will. You can't fall into this kind of love if you are not in tune with the living God. It takes conscious effort. Conscious effort. Loving our enemies means acting in their best interest. Let me repeat that. Loving our enemies means acting in their best interest. We can pray for them. We can bless them when they try to persecute us. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. We can give them food. 
when they are hungry and water when they are thirsty. Romans chapter 12, verse 20 and 21. And we can think of ways to help them. Jesus loves the whole world, even though the world is in rebellion against God. He asks us to follow his example by loving our enemies. Grant your enemies the same respect and right as you desire for yourself. In the passage that I read, we could see two commands. The first is, love your foes, love your enemies, love people who hate you, love people who despise you, love people who do not agree with you. And the reason for this is found in Luke chapter 6, verse 27. It means be different from the unsaved who only love those who love them. It also means practicing what we preach. John says, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother or sister is still in the darkness. First John chapter 2 and verse 29. My brothers and sisters, let me share the story with you. Jesse Owens was a track star who lived as a courageous man of faith. He was influenced largely by his parents, who were strong believers in Jesus Christ. During the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin, Owens, one of the few African Americans on the US team, received four gold medals in the presence of Kate failed Nazis and their leader, Hitler. He also befriended fellow athlete, Lars Long, a German. Surrounded by Nazi propaganda, Owens, simple act of living out his faith, impacted Lars's life. Lars Long wrote to Owens, and I quote, that hour in Berlin, when I first spoke to you, when you had your knee upon the ground, I knew you were in prayer. I think I might believe in God. End of quote. Owens, my Christian friends, demonstrated how believers can answer the Apostle Paul's charge to hate what is evil. And he devoted to one another in love. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Though he could have responded to the evil around him with hate, Owens chose to live by faith and show love to man who would later become his friend and eventually consider belief in God. I have brought this beautiful story to draw your attention to what we can do by living our faith for others to become a new vessel in Christ Jesus. In the midst of hatred, in the midst of persecution, Owens loved his faith and out of that I believe several many athletes also found faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second point I want you to note is that the rewards of this. The second is the reward for this. The rewards for this. Luke chapter 6 and verse 35b. This will demonstrate to the world that you are indeed sons and daughters of the Most High. When we laugh, the reward or the rewards for this would be that people would appreciate and become sons and daughters of the Most High. Today, in Ghana, most of us are excellent preachers, prophets, and priests. But unfortunately, we preach virtue and practice vice. We are perfect lawyers and judges, but unable to defend the vulnerable 
We are extraordinary doctors and nurses, but unable to make people smile. We are perfect politicians and lawmakers, but unable to right wrongs. We are security officers or persons to protect life and property, but we are unable to make people live in peace. We are all professional footballers and coaches, but unfortunately, there are no players. We are experts in waste management, but our communities and homes are more than refuse dumps. All of us are professional teachers, but unfortunately, we are unable to churn out people of morals and competencies. The reason is hatred and selfishness. We can do better if we allow God's Spirit to transform us to love one another. Think about this. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your Spirit kindle in us the fire of true devotion as we think about being our brother's keeper. And may this reflect in the way we live our lives. Amen. Thank you and shalom.